Yeah, Jen, no doubt about it. The Hurricanes hold on to win. Come back, I should say, to win 46-45. Finish the game locking up the Jackets. One of seven was Georgia Tech down the stretch. They didn't score in the final 3-0-2. That's game two. That's the appetizer for the main dish. We have Alyssa Kunane and NC State hosting Duke coming up here at just 4 o'clock Eastern, just a short 13 minutes from now. Number 16 versus number four, Kunane. Top 10 in the league and rebounding, one of the biggest forces in the post in the country. Hey everybody, I'm Dallin Cuff alongside the Hall of Famer Muffin McGraw. In just under six minutes, Lexi Gordon and Duke taking on NC State. She's back in the lineup, averaging just about 10 points a game. Missed the last game because of health and safety protocols will really help this Blue Devils squad. We'll explain why after this. Muffin McGraw, Dallin Cuff here in studio getting you ready for NC State hosting Duke 16 versus 4 in the country. Raina Perez, you see her assisted turnover issue, one of the better guards in the league. We are just about to tip off there. And NC State's won 14 straight. They've been on a roll right now, longest such streak since 84-86. Coach, uh, I know you're really into their ball screen and how they use it on the offensive side of the ball. Why are they so effective with it? I love the ball screen. You know, it's been around for about 100 years, but you see what <laughs> NC State can do because they have such great guard play. Here you see Perez. She's trying to set up Kunane for the ball screen. It just doesn't work. She doesn't use the screen, doesn't take her man down. It results in a turnover. Not a good play for them, but watch how she recovers from that. She comes down next time. She brings her man down to the level of the screen. There's no way that her man is going to get over the screen, which is what you want to do when you're playing against a good shooting guard. She sees that free throw jumper, and that's what you're aiming for. A great play. Diamond Johnson may be the best player on their team in terms of the ball screen. Look at the spacing between her and the screener. There's no way that defender can get through. But now Johnson comes off and freezes that post defender, which allows Javi to roll to the basket and get the wide open layup. And here you're going to go see a 1-4 high. This is really hard to defend because there's no help on the backside. She's going to come off Kunane's screen. And look at both defenders step out. You have Kunane, a wide open lane to the basket. Perez could make the pass. Much easier to go to the high-low look. She throws it to Kayla Jones, throws it into Kunane. The All-American gathers it in and makes the play. The ball screen is so effective for them. They have a lot of other people that can use it. But this is a team with great versatility, not just in their guards, but Kayla Jones can use that ball screen as well. Talk about their ball screen. Diamond Johnson, you just mentioned she's outstanding off of it. What does Duke have to do to win this game, Coach? Because they're, they're on the road as the 16th team. They're, they've been banged up with different health and issues. We do get Lexi Gordon back. What does she offer, and what do they have to do to win this game? Lexi is another three-point shooter, which they really missed her and Taylor in the last game. They've got to make about 10 threes, I think, to win this game. That's something that they're not really capable of doing. They, they average about five per game. They've really got to rebound. And taking care of the ball has been a little bit of an issue for them. Day Wilson coming off the bench. She was really good in the non-conference, but since Christmas, she's really struggled. In terms of guarding Kunain, what do you think they're going to do in this approach? Well, you know, they played zone against South Carolina, and they tried to really contain Aaliyah Boston, and it ended up a really close game, single-digit finish. I thought a good moral victory for Duke. So you may see some zone. However, NC State has five players that shoot 40% or better from the three-point line. So if they're going to look to double-team, I hope they don't come from the ball side and give them that easy three on that side. We saw that when they played uh, Virginia Tech, doubling Elizabeth Kitley. Asia Shepard got a lot of open looks. They were able to really carve up that defense. We'll see how they approach it as this we are our third game of the day here on ACC Network. Let's get down to Reynolds Coliseum to Beth Moens and Debbie Antonelli. Coach Muffin McGraw, myself, Dallin Cuff. We will see you at halftime. Can't wait to tip this thing off. Lift every voice and sing. Martin Luther King Jr was an activist for not just black people, but all people. Definitely made a lasting impact on the world. You just think about someone who had a positive message, always somebody who wanted change. It made people realize that at the end of the day, we're all human beings. I'm only one person, but my voice has the power. Being on teams where I have sisterhoods with people that don't look like me. His legacy is about love. His bravery inspired me to use my voice to speak out on what I believe in, regardless of what people think. He never stopped fighting for what he believed in. Just keep fighting until change come about. So I believe us as young men have to carry on the dream 
take a stand for what we think is right. Know that working together to achieve his dream is the only way to be successful. To inspire others that don't have a voice. Speak up and just be the change and be inclusive. To never underestimate how powerful your voice can be. To invest in yourself and invest in others. The things that I dream about will be reality in the future. A wintry day in the triangle as we get set for the Wolfpack of NC State and the Duke Blue Devils, a ranked showdown as these two sides get together for the 84th time dating back to 1974. And we welcome you to Kayao Court inside Reynolds Coliseum, Beth Mowens, along with Debbie Antonelli. And what's the saying around these parts, Debbie? The strength of the wolf is in the pack. Strength of the pack is in the wolf. And that's how these guys play. Oh, it's totally the way NC State plays. Very unselfish, very balanced. A complete team effort to average nearly 80 points a game. And the reason why is they're anchored by their All-American center at 6'5". Elisa Kunain leads the team in scoring and rebounding. She's got the go-to, the counters. She also can score in their pick-and-pop game. And she's a tremendous rebounder and outletter into their break. And if you double-team her, this is what you have to deal with. The balance of NC State. Four players better than 40% outside the three-point line. They lead the nation in three-point percentage. They are tough to guard in the open floor. How about on the other side for the Blue Devils? Already have a couple of ranked wins on the season. If they want another one today, Elizabeth Balagoon's got to be big. She's an experienced player. She's terrific on the glass. She's a great finisher in transition, approaching 1,000 points on her career. She's got to put up a big number, like 25 tonight, if they're going to be able to pull the upset. NC State has won six of the last eight in this rivalry, but the last time they met, it was Duke a winner in this building. They did not see each other last year after the Blue Devils opted out of the season after just the fourth game of the year. It's a very much a new look group under the direction of their new head coach this year, Kara Lawson. They have seven transfers and two freshmen joining their five returning players. And NC State quickly the other way. They average 80 points per game. And as you've already alluded, Debbie, a very well-balanced attack. Well, they run the floor hard and wide. They understand what a good shot is. They're very unselfish in sharing the basketball. And Westmore has done a fantastic job building that here inside his system. Ninth season at NC State, over 30 on the sideline as he coaches in his 1,000th career game today. And uh, the Wolfpack of NC State are your back-to-back -back ACC tournament champs. And with three straight trips to the Sweet 16, Debbie, they won't be satisfied with that this year. They have much bigger aspirations with everybody back from a year ago. Everyone back from a team that went to the Sweet 16. Back-to-back -back years, really, minus their NCAA canceled year. And Westmore has done a fantastic job. He's a thinker. He's a motivator. He's a studier of the game. And he does a great job putting his personnel in a position to succeed. And it all runs through Kunane, the big girl, and a lot of good shooters around her. Here's one of them, Marina Perez, who was the hero of last year's ACC championship game, hits the three. I think Miranda Perez is set to have a big game, and she's due for one, and that's a great start for her. She's so good off the bounce, she can shoot the three. Here's a look at the Duke starting five. They are yet to be at full strength. Since the Christmas holiday, they've had some injuries. They've had some health and safety protocols. They do get Lexi Gordon back today, but they are still without starting guard Celeste Taylor. Kayla Jones gets in the lane for the pull-up. See, that's a matchup that Duke will have to deal with with 6'5", Jay Williams guarding one of NC State's perimeter-like players. Kayla Jones at the four spot is the best from outside the arc, shooting the three ball by percentage. A good child, a good three-point shooter, a blocking foul called on NC State inside. Really good acceleration in that set right there by Duke. They get a nice screen and a hard roll, the rotation from the weak side late. Kayla Jones picks up her first. Anime Akinbadi James, the 6'3 senior, originally from Nigeria. And 
is Lexi Gordon now over at uh, the scorer's table, ready to check in. The grad student out of Fort Worth who missed their last Virginia Tech game with the health and safety protocols, but she is back after two years at UConn and then two years at Texas Tech. And the grad studies in Durham, and there is Celeste Taylor. Didn't play in that Virginia Tech game midweek after a shoulder injury suffered up at the Carrier Dome against Syracuse. Crutchfield coming off the screen for the bucket and a hot start for NC State. Look how quickly Crutchfield comes off that screen and gets her feet organized. One of the things that Kayla Jones told me before the game is that they were going to start tonight with energy. I said, isn't that the way you're supposed to always start it? She said, yes, but we don't always do it, but we're going to do it tonight. They hit their first three shots. Good child with the nice feed inside. Up and body James. She's got all four of their points. Kinane sets the screen, and Crutchfield with the first miss. And if this is on Jones, that's going to be her second. And a couple of quick ones here on Kayla. Watch Kai Crutchfield. Sets a screen, comes off the Kayla Jones screen, runs good child right into it, and gets into the shooting rhythm quickly because she gets the bottom part of her shot ready to go. That's your footwork, and your hips loaded and ready and your hips turn to the basket. And then it's a great follow through. It's a beautiful looking jump shot by Ty Crutchfield. Kayla Jones goes out, replaced by Jada Boyd. They have a lot of pieces that they can plug in and play. In fact, both these sides can go deep on their benches. Well, NC State has the equivalent of seven starters when you talk about Diamond Johnson and Jada Boyd. They've got tremendous quality depth off their bench. A two man game. Perez Kunane slips and scores. See, that's where Reina Perez has such a great analytical mind about how she dices up defenses. She just made one more dribble to give Kunane another second to get closer to the bucket. Good shot, short on the shot. Jakia Brown Turner. Kunane after the kick out gets it right back. Around and out. It's a really good repost and a good job by Akambadi James to stand her up. Good child. Nice feed. Akambadi James can't convert. One of six to start the game for Duke. Kunane bothered on the shot and then they traveled with it. You know, at the beginning of the year, Elisa Kinane talked about her conditioning and how she was running ahead of the ball better and that she was able to get up and down the floor, that her speed was something that she really worked on. That was a good example of it right there. She got ahead of the basketball, just couldn't get organized to finish. Amaya finkley Guidi checks into the Duke lineup, transfer from Syracuse. Brown Turner now, so after hitting their first three shots, they've missed three of their last four. Duke with a third turnover already, as you see Carol Lawson. Second season after uh, the shortened year a year ago. Spent time, of course, uh, in the broadcasting ranks. Spent some time as an assistant in the NBA. And uh, perhaps most notably, played for Coach Pat. Summit at Tennessee. Boy, oh, nice whoa. step through the lane. That's that quickness in that high post area. That's just really hard to guard. Even though Duke was loaded to the ball and had three jerseys in the paint, that's the athleticism of Boyd. Good child trying to use that screen again up top. Way off the mark. And Brown Turner, one and done. A very good NC State rebounding team as well. Perez off the cross. Oh, the crowd was ready to explode on that one. Unfortunately, with the bad weather, uh, it was a sold out crowd, 5,500. Uh, some hearty souls have shown up today here at K Outdoor. Kudos to uh, Wolfpack Athletics and the campus facilities for getting the parking lot and the sidewalks and everything clear so the fans that wanted to come could be here today five buckets from five different wolf packers including that one from jada boyd
Welcome back to K. Alcourt here at Reynolds Coliseum in Raleigh, North Carolina for Duke NC State. And it's the start of We Back Pat Week around college basketball. Of course, legendary head coach Pat Summit. And uh, some of the greats that have played for her. Of course, Kelly Harper was a coach here at NC State for a while. And then the Olympics, including gold medalist Kara Lawson. Now on the Duke sideline. Well, Carol Lawson has a Women's Basketball Hall of Fame resume. There's no question about yep. it. And she has uh, had the chance to experience winning at the highest level, including the Olympics and the WNBA. Four Final Fours in her days at Tennessee. And uh, you know, Pat and Kay Yao were the best of friends. Oh yeah. 1984 Olympics, Pat back was the gold the, medal yeah. head coach and, and Kay was one of her assistants, along with Sylvia Hatchell. And, uh, well, excuse me, Sylvia was in 88, I'm sorry, as a, uh, on the Olympic staff in 88, the former head coach at the University yeah. of North Carolina. Lisa Kunane looking to go off the bounce. Rebounds are on miss. Ladies and gentlemen, the left. See, that's, Elisa with four. that's where Elisa plays through the contact. You could have called a foul there, but the officials had a patient whistle. And she was able to get her own rebound and be able to finish. Now to the 10 point lead. Uh, the Duke Blue Devils just one of 10. And now four turnovers to start this one. Crutchfield pulls up. Ran into two defenders there. And here comes Day Wilson the other way. Gordon looks for three, and she's got it. That's a really good find by Cheyenne Day Wilson, who's been struggling with her own offense, but there shows some maturity to kick it out to a really good three-point shooter in Lexi Gordon. Kanan defended by Finkley Greedy. It's really hard to bring a double with this lineup on the floor for NC State, just because they're so good at attacking. Jade. Jada Boyd doesn't always shoot the three, but guess what? There it is. They hey. double down, and she was open. I mean, she's the one you want to double off of with this line up on the floor. That's only her fourth of the entire yes. season. See, that's how good and confident this NC State team is playing, that she's not afraid to pull the trigger on that. Numbers. Another turnover. Here's Perez the other way. And then out. Trying to clean it up, and she does. Now, Raina Perez just sprints the right wing, and that's going to force Duke into a timeout here in the first quarter. Nineteen to seven. So after a big win, they uh, knocked North Carolina out of the unbeaten ranks, and now trying to take it to Duke and own this triangle rivalry. Seven points off of five deep turnovers here in the first quarter. NC State doing a really good job being active on the defensive end. There's a great feed inside. When you catch it that deep, it's hard to stop anybody from scoring. And certainly, Elisa Kunane doesn't want to commit a foul there. Malcolm Bobby James gets the bucket. Foul, two minutes of this opening stands up. Diamond Johnson, the transfer from Rutgers, her first attempt, no good. And it will stay at this end. I think I'd like to see Diamond Johnson get a little sweat going before she pulls the trigger on that. Plus, she's got those jets. It's like a jet pack on her back. She can fly. Kudane will come out, get a little extra rest into the break. Camille Hobby now in its center. Here's Johnson. Off the bounce. Rejected. Great help. Duke unable to knock it down in transition. Gordon had a clean look at it. Jada Boy doing a good job of rebounding out of her area, just pursuing the glass. Perez, another big cross. And NC State is not at its best when they go one pass and a shot. 
Balagoon. Hobby got a piece. They need to run some offense right here. You can hear Westmore yelling, move it. Abby lost it. That's the first turnover of the game for NC State. Gordon, another open looking transition. And now they can hold for one. We're going to go with about nine here and expect a ball screen for Arena Perez to let her make a decision with a ball in her hands. I think she's the best decision maker with a ball for NC State. Perez able to get the shot up. Well defended by the Jesus. Gordon, good if it goes. And a 19 to 9 NC State lead at the end of the first. And she stayed with the lead over Duke. Oh, it looks like Summer Herb in the house, Debbie. How about that? Summer Herb took uh, NC State's 1998 team to the Final Four, and she was the 1999 ACC Player of the Year. It's always great to see Summer in the house when the Wolfpack is playing. Uh, had a nice chat with her, didn't we, before the game. She's very excited about this team, and uh, she's a big NC State fan and huge fan of these young women and what they've been able to do here inside Reynolds Coliseum over the last few years. And one of those links to Coach K. Yao and the Final Four team of 1998. Here on K. Yao Court this afternoon for the Wolfpack and the Blue Devils. And Duke really doing a good job of guarding personnel. I think they look much more active and you know, Carol Lawson does have a hard-working team. I mean, there's no question about it. That it's still a process for them. They're trying to figure it out. And, you know, she's seven transfers, five of which McDonald's All-Americans. Two of them are out right now. Um, Celeste Taylor is one. And Jordan Oliver is the other. Crutchfield to try and beat the buzzer comes up short. That's a pretty good list right there. Yeah, Nia Green has been uh, in and out as well. Nicked up, another transfer from Louisville. You know, when Coach Lawson got the job, she really didn't have a chance to recruit the 2021 class. And then you know, she went to the transfer portal, which most coaches do go to the transfer portal. As a matter of fact, most coaches save at least one scholarship for the transfer portal now. Not just going to the high schoolers. Well, I know you agree, and I think for those of us that grew up outside of the triangle, it still is a big boost for women's basketball. When these, these three programs, along with North, these two in North Carolina, are competitive, not only for ACC championships, but are in the national conversation as well. And you're starting to see Courtney Banger turn a corner in North Carolina. And most folks don't think it'll be long before Carol Lawson gets them cranked up. Of course, Wes Moore's already got it going here. Well, it's a tough neighborhood, that's for sure. Yeah. We've heard that many times about being in this area and then, you know, growing up in this area. Basketball is king, you know, or queen. Mm -hmm. And Jones goes baseline and gets the roll. When those brands are good, the ACC is really good. And that's equally on the men's side as well. Certainly a lot of anticipation that you know, under Joanne P. McCauley, they were winning ACC championships. And uh, under Coach G and Gail Gestenkos, they were going to Final Fours and playing for national championships. There's a lot of tradition on that Duke side. A chance for a three-point play here for Williams. This is an excellent screen and roll right here. Watch how hard Williams screens and then rolls. Really good. Execution in the middle third of the floor when you've got the court spaced out. Wait, is that her contact on the floor? 
I think it is. Hey, that'll give us a chance to let you know that Friday night at 9 Eastern, Bald Men on Campus is back. Debbie, Jay Billis, LaFonso Ellis, Seth Greenberg preview the ACC slate of weekend games and have the latest news from around the conference. Only on ACC Network and your ESPN app. If you want to know what's going on on the men's side, mm -hmm. these three guys can give you the yeah. entire landscape. It's really interesting learning. And I always learn something from those yeah. three. On the women's side, by the way, uh, mark your calendars for Thursday night primetime on ESPN. <laughs> and that is setting up as a showdown for first place in the ACC right here on Kayao Court. North Carolina State getting set to host Louisville. The Cardinals were winners today for the 15th game in a row. They won at Boston College. That would be win number 400 in the career hey. of Jeff Walls. Round of Congratulations, balls. Jeff. That foul is the second on Jade Williams, so each side has a starter with two fouls here in the first half. And this is a good matchup to keep your eye on. Diamond Johnson and Cheyenne Day Wilson. She's got the ball in her hands right here. Steal by Diamond. Doesn't have the numbers, waits for it, finds Jones oh, filling pass. a lane. What a pass. How did she sneak that in there? Incredible. Kayla's got seven. And Diamond Johnson with the pretty assist. Good challenge. Back. See, she was trying to use that screen. That's right? that twist action by Duke. Screen, rescreen, or twist. You go over the top, and the sec they twist, and then you get stuck underneath, and Goodchild can knock down the three. It's a very well-executed play. Kanane, trying to establish inside, goes to the left. And Lisa starting out two of six. Blue well off the mark. And a foul on the rebound against the Blue Devils. Watch Diamond Johnson right here. She pushes, doesn't have numbers, hesitates to give Kayla Jones just enough space. Look at that feed. It was beautiful. Side of the ball, yeah. Totally. That's why transition is so hard to guard. It's hard to get organized when you run and push at the pace that NC State can push. Tried to drop it off. Kanane got a hand on it to knock it out of there. Turnover number eight. With just five baskets so far in this first half for the Blue Devils. Perez lights it up from deep. That's why if you bring help, NC State's got you all spaced out outside the three-point line. You bring help, and they are confident and willing passers. Perez with a couple of trays, eight points. Look at the dig by Diamond and a steal. Other steal. Johnson will take it herself. Missed it. NC State's left a few points on the floor. Yes, they have. Doubling up the Blue Devils, but they got a chance to knock this thing wide open. Crutchfield on the run, finds Diamond, and missed another layup. I'd go right back to that set with Neil Goodchild with Akinbody James, who's such a good screener. Whatever Tara Lawson wants from her team, they're not doing it. Now. They'll have to settle for a three, and we're not able to run the play she was looking for right there. Jones spinning. Number five to go here in the half. Two touchdown lead for the Wolfpack. When you've got the best three-point shooting team in the country and you help, forget about it. Perez buries her second triple of the game.
a little celebration for Lori Hennis and the NC State cross country team. Debbie recognized uh, for their national championship. Yeah. Hey, national championship. Are you kidding me? That is awesome. Congratulations to them. Coach Hennis and then Raleigh Geiger, who's been at NC State. I got to believe maybe close to 40 years, the men's cross country coach who also was out on the floor being recognized. That's a good dude right there. I've known him for a long time. Congratulations to them. As a matter of fact, I used to ask him for tips when I was in college. How do we, how do I run longer and faster? <laughs> well, the miss, here comes NC yep. State. They've assisted on seven of their 12 baskets. Five different players with a feed. Diamond Johnson hits another three. Diamond better outside the arc than she is at making a layup tonight, today. NC State, as I mentioned, had left a few points on the board, off the board. Four of six from downtown. And on this end of the floor, they have held Duke to just five field goals so far in this first half. This action right here on the top of the floor for Carol Austin has been good. Looking by James Long rebound, they'll have another crack at it. And a reach in and a foul is going to be called on Diamond Johnson. Got another college hoop triple header for you coming up on Saturday. Men's hoops, Virginia NC State and North Carolina Wake Forest. Coming your way. Well, North Carolina with a big win over Georgia Tech last night. And I've actually got the North Carolina men at Miami on Tuesday. Should be fun. Two teams in second place behind the Blue Devils right now. Actually, Miami has a might be in first place with their win. They didn't play this weekend. Miami had a win over the Duke Blue Devils in Cameron. Leading scorer in the first half adds to that total. She's got 10. She's too good. And she's not who you start with on the top of the scouting report, but she's so dangerous. Over 1,600 points in her career. She was a big time scorer when she came to NC State as a transfer. She's such a great facilitator. 50% from the floor in the first half has knocked down a couple of triples. Johnson with the rebound and her head up. They can get Kunane going a little bit. Quiet first half so far for Elisa. Kunane likes that repost. Oh. Double team comes and one. What a tough two right there. That's a great set. She gets a post up. They play behind. You have to play behind her and make her make a play. You bring some help. She played through the contact a couple of times already in this game. Balagoon whistled for the foul coming over with the help. And uh, no one in the history of NC State basketball has knocked down more of these than Kunane has. That would have been number 300 or 455, Debbie. <laughs> well, you jinxed it. <laughs> number one all time at the line. And she does shoot a very high percentage. As a matter of fact, in a late game situation, you want her on the floor because she can make free throws. Duke had it, stepped out of bounds with it. You know, over the course of Elisa Kunane's career at NC State, we've watched her play the game a little bit lower to high, be a little bit more tougher, really work on her conditioning. A tremendous IQ about the way she plays. What a great piece to build around. Second team All-American last year. She was the ACC Tournament MVP. Second year in a row, the pack of one. Kunane spinning to the left and another and one. I mean, they are physical with her inside and she's showing tremendous toughness right now. Watch this post. Great spin, goes to the left, the go-to over the left shoulder and then a counter like this, tough to deal with inside. 84% on the season. 
unable to get the second one, and it's the biggest lead of the ball game for NC State. Nine points now for Kunane. And the defense right now holding Duke to just 23% shooting. Cooper's in the corners, operate in the middle third. Good D by NC State. You know, Carol Lawson has a lot of sets. She has a lot of plays in her playbook. I was at practice watching NC State scout team go through or try to attempt to go through. But what's really impressive to me is their bigs rebound. They screen well. They re-screen. Tough to deal with. Yeah, another foul inside as uh, they've gone to Kanane now. Three straight possessions. I think Wes wanted to make sure well, she had a touch. I mean, this is where NC State, you want to be, go, you want to go from good to great or great to elite. You got to be able to make plays like that. You got to understand inside the flow of the game. These two right here, Diamond Johnson and Reina Perez, have to know the ball has to go inside. And next Sunday, we've got another really good women's basketball quadruple header for you on ACC Net and the app. On some of the featured affairs, Carolina Tech, Virginia Tech, NC State. Coming your way next Sunday. It was NC State and Louisville for the ACC Championship last year. They will uh, get reacquainted on Thursday night here at Reynolds. Boy, that should be electric. Oh, that'll be great. You know, Louisville is good. As you said, 15 in a row. Emily Engsler is a player that you have to keep your eye on if you're going against Louisville. She's a tremendous impact player on both sides of the floor for Jeff Walls. And then there's Haley Van Lith in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Clutch. State has scored the last nine, eight of those from Kunane. As we approach the final minute of this first half. Always probing, always attacking. Oh, great rebound by Hayes. Madison flying in from the weak side. Brown Turner, the lefty. I don't think Wes cared for either one of those shots. Both were quick. Day Wilson got it. Duke needs to figure out a way to speed up the tempo of the game so they can get some transition opportunities. So they've got to get some stops so they can rebound and let Cheyenne Day Wilson, the top scoring freshman in the ACC, go to work. That'll be an adjustment I'll be looking for out of Coach Lawson's team in the first five minutes of the third quarter. What does the tempo of the game look like? Johnson off the ball, fake, got it. Chance for Duke to get one up. Day Wilson for three, he got it. Big bucket for the rookie. Cuts it to 20 at the half. Only freshman in the ACC, the leader team in scoring this year. Knocks down the triple, and it's 42-22. NC State at the break. NC State at home with the lead over Duke as we get you to the studio with Dallin and Muffet. Welcome to ACC Network Halftime Report. Shia Day Wilson's buzzer beater cuts the deficit to 20. Alongside the Hall of Famer, Muff McGraw, I'm Dallin Cuff. Coach, <laughs> what, what, what's, what's going on right now? With, with, is, it, is it NC State's been great or has it Duke been really bad? Give me your breakdown. Well, NC State is forcing Duke to put the ball on the floor, and that is not their strength. They're taking away that quick catch and shoot on the three-point line. I said earlier I thought Duke was going to have to make about 10 threes. So far, I think they've made two or three. They got that last one. I'm sure Wes is not happy about that. Gave her the wide-up and looking a little momentum going into it, but it's all NC State. They had great success going into Kunane. I'm surprised that the last few possessions didn't go into her. Kunane finishes with 11 and a half, four of nine from the field. Um, if you're Duke going into halftime, if you're Kara Lawson, what is the conversation to her squad right now? 
Boy, they, they are really struggling at both ends of the floor. They can't get any stops because NC State just has so many weapons. It was interesting they put Kayla Jones down on the block instead of Cunane for a stretch, trying to force Duke to play that too big lineup. They like the four guard lineup. It's better for them to get more threes off. They're forced to play two bigs, and that's really taken away from them offensively. So Duke's got to figure out a way that how are we going to score? I mean, they're not really getting to the free throw line. They're not getting anything inside. So they, they've got to do a better job with their screens. They've got to execute better and set better screens. Well, Duke is figuring out how tough it is now. For folks that don't know, at ESPN, the researchers are the smartest, brightest people that we work with. My man Deontay said this a few minutes ago. These stats are brutal. There's really no way to sum it up. It's pretty succinct and pretty accurate. The stats are tough right now for Duke. But now, I asked you before, what if you do if you're Kara Lawson? If you're Coach Moore, though, this is your last half before you're going to play Louisville on Thursday. What is your message to your team to go finish this? Yeah, you want it. Finish it in the third quarter so I can sub and keep everybody healthy heading into the next game. I think that's what he's talking about. Well, we'll see if they can take care of business, if they jump on Duke or if Duke can battle back on the road. They're going to find a way to contain Alyssa Kunane. She got going in that second quarter. She's got 11 in the game. They're up 20. Second half coming up next. Boy, a well-balanced attack. For NC State in that first half, they have the 42-22 lead over Duke. Seven different players scored. Five different players had an assist. Nine different NC State players had a rebound in that first half. Beth Mullins along with Debbie Antonelli, like we talked about, big for Kunane and big for the shooters around her. Yeah, great balance. I mean, this is a well-put-together offensive-like machine. Besides missing a few layups, they didn't turn it over only twice. They didn't foul, only four fouls. So that's the way you want to play. They played clean outside of that. And Reyna Perez makes it all work, as well as Kunane played on the inside in the first half. Reyna Perez is the one that makes it all work because she can get the ball to you when and where. I call it the three W's of a good point guard. She also has the ability to score. Good penetration and kick. Good job spotting up beside or outside the three point line. And then the mid range is also available. Reyna Perez, the point guard for NC State, was fantastic in the first 20. The third dub being, you got, you got when and where. Who to get the ball to you. Who to get it to, when and where. Who name? <laughs> That's exactly right. And there was a stretch in that second quarter where when the game slowed down and it wasn't in transition, that they went inside to Cunade, and that's what they need to do to, to be an elite team. Well, we agree with what Coach McGraw was saying during, during the break. Why didn't you get touches those last couple of possessions to really get things going? And Duke, motivated out of that locker room, made a good child with the three. Well, if you're Duke now, you're looking to see if you can cut this thing in half. You know, can you get it to half? by the start of the fourth quarter. Can we get a few stops in a row and get some momentum? Jaquia Brown turning with the bucket, so now all five of the starters have scored. NC State is led by as many as 23 this afternoon. They got out to the quick start. And they held Duke to just the eight baskets in the first half. And I think starting the second half with a smaller lineup, not going to the two bigs, meaning Jade Williams is on the bench here to start the second half, I think allows Duke to match up a little bit better with NC State's perimeter game, including Kayla Jones at the four. She's a hybrid, you know. She's not just a stretch four. She's a hybrid. She can do more than just pick and pop in the four-man game, or in the two-man game as a four player. The long bar from Raina Perez, her first. Good job, Gordon, in the lineup to start this second half. Along with Balladine, Bay Wilson, Akinbani James for Duke. Brown Turner, Kunin, Perez, Jones, and Crutchfield, same unit out there for NC State. Here is Kunin off the bounce. <laughs> Come on, 6-5. Are you kidding me? They're icing a ball screen. They pitch it back to her over the top, and she can make that play? Wow. Player of the year candidates right now in the ACC. Kunane? Yes. Look, is there one for Louisville? That's another group you know, that's very well balanced. It is. They're all doing it together. That's what makes the teams really good, right? Uh, I think Emily Angsler has got to be in a conversation just because she's so valuable to what they do on both sides of the ball. 
Statistically, probably Elizabeth Kitley from Virginia Tech is putting up the numbers. Yeah, uh, I think Lorella Kubai is another one that's getting invaluable better. to Georgia Tech. Oh, look, we're seeing on the men's side so many upsets on the women's side, such parity this year. I think the postseason tournaments are going to be absolutely nuts and a lot of fun for fans. Her name. I mean, she was three for four against North Carolina outside the arc. Look at that post. That's a great play. A good no call. Assist Kayla Jones in 15 now for Kunane. And I think Wes Moore was thinking a lot like Muffet McGraw. Let's bury him in the third so we can rest our guys in the fourth. Balladoon high off the window. After a two for nine start, Elizabeth gets the bucket. And when Kayla Jones beats Kunane down the floor, she's first to the block. She gets that post-up opportunity. And that's all right with Kunane because she's very capable of that trail three as well. Yeah, Mila Goodchild is really good in that twist action. You know, when the screen comes, she comes off the screen and then they reset the screen again. It's a twist. So one thing I noticed on Thursday night in the Virginia Tech game is that Duke can be punishing with that screening action on the top of the floor. Really take a defender out and open up some space for their shooters. And also it would be a double ice bath after the game because it's physical. <laughs> Weaving into the lane, swatted away, and it will be out of bounds off of NC State. Well, good defensive play right there by Vanessa DeJesus. Dribble handoff. She doesn't give up on the play. Excellent job defensively. Day Wilson. For three. Well, there's some fight in Duke coming out of the locker room. And they continue to chip away at the deficit. Perez lost it. Name, create some space and score. Well, that's where you got to have some toughness right there. Westmore looking for a foul. He's been pretty physical with Kinane on the inside all game. Well, that's the scouting report, right? Oh, oh absolutely. Try to knock her about. And she's shown the toughness so far today. Knocked out of bounds. You know I call her Big Smile. It's a nickname that has actually stuck. Westmore would prefer I called her the Big Scowl because she was tough. But I think she can bring toughness and bring that smile at the same time. Got a hand in the passing lane. Comes out to De Jesus. Jade Williams down to four on the shot clock. Good child. See? Good twist right there by Jade Williams. Another chance here for the Blue Devils. Carol Lawson becoming the point guard that she is over there on the sideline with her offense in front of her. That's what I always say about Wes Moore. He's same thing. Fouls on Crutchfield, her first. Williams, no. We got another chance. Got it. Williams has four. Look at that double parry inside by Kunane. Good ball movement and Kunane's shape up to the ball and the post up is perfect timing. That's what you call good chemistry on the offensive end, Beth. And that will be the third foul on Williams. Back in a moment. Now Duke winning this third quarter thus far as they try and sneak their way back into this one, Debbie behind the play of Elizabeth Balagoon, two points at the half. 
She's got five. Mila Goodchild doing a good job of relocating on the perimeter. And a good inside out. Balagoon got a couple of buckets here, and Duke has outscored NC State in the third quarter. 13 to 8. And as we resume play, Elisa Kunane, 17 points, four rebounds. We get 18 for Elisa on both the Wade and the Wooden watch list this year for National Player of the Year honors. Owner of four double doubles, including the uh, midweek win over Virginia. They made quick work of the Cavs. She had 10 and 10 in about 20 minutes with court time. Kunane calling out all the action defensively. Stepping out to hedge. Good take by the Jesus and a better recovery. Good block by James. Isaiah able to get a hand on it, knock it out. De Jesus with the find. Gay Wilson relocates. Kunane into the double team and a held ball. Balagoon there with the help. It'll stay with NC State. James fouled. It'll be number two on Balagoon. Really good ball fake inside by Jada Boyd. Gets Balagoon off her feet. Jada 77% on the season. Hey, every Thursday night at 10 Eastern, right after our women's basketball doubleheader, the Nothing But Net crew will break down the night in the ACC for you with highlights and analysis of every women's game. And it's inside. You can only get one place right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Seven of ten at the line. And Jakia Brown Turner will check back in, replacing Kai Crutchfield. DeJesus held up off the bounce. Out of Sierra Canyon, California. Same high school as Bronnie James. She had started the first 11 games, now coming off the bench. Balagoon steps away. Kamein snags it. Tough rebound. Fifth board. Hey, Diamond Johnson says, I like this matchup right here. Boyd off the bounce. Layup. And it's quickly back up to a 20 point game. The Duke doesn't really have a, a post up player that they can throw the ball on the block to, right, and get a bucket. They can invert their guards down there like we saw Balagoon invert the last time, but their post players are really good in that middle third between the elbows. As I've referenced a couple of times, and they're, they're terrific screeners. They're hard rim rollers. They're not screen and pop players. And uh, uh, when you have a person at the top of the floor like Carol Lawson has with her post play that can hard roll to the rim, you really do create some space for your shooters. Gordon gets one of two. Johnson trying to 
set up Kunang. Lisa off the catch won't go. Nothing Bobby James is there. Loose. After the initial push out of the locker room by Duke, NC State has a. Oh, come on. <laughs> Taking charge Up again. The step up screen, the pop, and then to be able to make that play off the bounce. Wow. I mean, that's big time right there. That's why her WNBA stock continues to go up. She's not just a low post threat, she's a tremendous passer, three-point shooter, guard-like skills, and a post-up body. Shooting 50%, she's got 21 points as DeJesus knocks down the three, her first bucket. I mean, the maturation uh, of her development under Wes Moore has been outstanding. You can just see her growth inside her game as she's gotten tougher mentally, physically tougher. Talking about Elisa Kunane. <laughs> NC State playing some really good D. This is impressive. It's a step up. It's the pop to the three-point line. You got to respect it. As a post player, it's hard to guard it. And then she can put it on the floor and spin like that at 6'5". We just don't see a lot of women with size that can do that. 11 in the first half, 10 points in this third quarter. Well, she might be done. Yeah. You know, Westmore would say uh, there's been times where they're playing so well that he for, sort of forgets that she's down there at the Clemson game on the road. He sort of forgot because he was by himself. None of the staff was with him. They were in health and safety protocols. And that's a pretty good number in three quarters of play. Camille Hobby will replace her in the post. Final minute of this third quarter. NC State so good at feeding the post, playing through inside out. Gordon. Good D by Diamond Johnson. And uh, 10 seconds for NC State to work with. Perez. Brown Turner, nope. 60 to 41, NC State as we get set for the fourth. Lisa Kunane, 21 through three quarters. Tough on the inside, two feet in the paint, it's gonna be two points. Play through contact, can get to the line, makes free throws, scores with her left or her right. And this is just her points in the paint. We've seen her with a runner and we've seen her with a floater. It's been fantastic. 11 in the first half, 10 in the third quarter. Mom and dad at home watching due to the weather, weren't able to make the trip. I'm sure they got their feet up right now, taking a break, resting. Dave Wilson with an and one, and if you're Duke right here, you're probably thinking, well, let's let's start doing some things to force them to put Kanane back on the floor. Mm -hmm. 
Diamond Johnson with her second foul. Again, NC State trying to get things lined up proper for their showdown for first place against Louisville on Thursday night in primetime on ESPN. Cardinals were a winner earlier today. They're 15th in a row. And for NC State, they are trying to work on a 15th straight ACC win in a row dating back to last year. Here's what Rebecca Lobo thinks about her draft prospects. Well, uh, her post moves are excellent, and her range is to the three-point line. Not many 6'5s can do that. I think Rebecca's going to take a look on Thursday, but maybe she might change some of those. If she plays well, because she's played well tonight. You're looking in for a plus instead of a minus? Maybe. <laughs> not, maybe not a plus or a minus, just an A. That'd be a little bit of an upgrade. <laughs> and foul will be called on Jean Williams. That is her fourth. Well, she's clearly one of the best post players. And if you rate, if you rate her versus the rest of the college game, her, her efficiencies are outstanding. And now, if you're rating her against WNBA players, that's a little bit different. Boyd. Balladine with the rebound. She, by the way, is four points shy of 1,000 for her career is Elizabeth. She's got nine points today. Playing for her third different ACC school. Started out her career at Georgia Tech, two years at Louisville, and now with Duke. That would be traveling, I thought. Can you fall down with the ball? Day Wilson. Another good defensive set for NC State, forcing a tough shot at the buzzer. This is where you want to work on some execution if you're NC State. You want to continue to move the ball. Not losing sight of the fact that if Duke gets a couple of stops in a row and can score, just make it a 15 point game. NC State's led by as many as 23 today. Got a foul off the ball on De Jesus. You know, the game inside the game is always watching the coaches. You know, Wes Moore is calling plays with his back to Carol Lawson so she can't hear or see what he's calling. She's she's getting a call and she turns to his staff to see what 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 the play is. You know, it's just the game inside the game with all these coaches over there on the sideline. And now you can go all the way out, you know, 10 more feet to the coach's box where you can actually really hear what's going on over there. The scouting that you can do now, the game film that you have, you can pick up everything in your preparation. Oftentimes an assistant coach will be responsible for the scout of a particular team. We had a chance to talk to uh, assistant coach Beth Cunningham for Duke uh, before the game, and I know Muffet McGraw will probably agree with this, that, you know, Beth's assessment of NC State was that, you know, they're, they're really good in the way they shoot the ball. I said, Beth, as good as some of those Notre Dame teams that you coached with Muffin McGraw. She said, maybe better because of their balance. It's a good look at Coach Cunningham. Boy, she and Katrina Gaither were a oh. of a combo back in the 90s for the Three. Fighting Irish. There's not many greater shooters in the history of the women's game. Certainly not at Notre Dame. Consider all the great shooters they've had. Brianna Perez, no. Kunane has had to come back onto the court for NC State as the score tightened up a little bit, and she immediately scores. She's got 23. Her career high is 28. Hold ball. And it will be a turnover for the Blue Devils. Really good dig inside by Lexi Gordon to tie that up. Check that, it'll stay at this end. And we got another college hoop triple header for you coming up Saturday right here on ACC Network. And uh, these are the two featured events. Virginia NC State and North Carolina Wake 
Forest. Starting Saturday afternoon for you on ACC Network. We just saw the state men uh, at Duke yesterday. Yeah, and I also think that if NC State men had played somebody else besides Duke yesterday, they would have had a chance to win. I mean, Duke is so good on the men's side. Coach, Coach Krzyzewski's farewell tour should be really exciting in March. They got a chance. Paulo Bancaro, if you have not seen him play, he is an amazing athlete and very good basketball player. Boyd gets to the rim. Well, that's just talented right there to handle that contact and to be able to score. On the drive, blocked. Boyd got a piece of it. Crutchfield, easy the other way. I was here in practice earlier in the season when Wes Moore said, no one else has the green light to block shots except for Jada Boyd. Jada, you can block anything you can get. <laughs> he didn't want Kunane in foul trouble. And Jada getting the work done there. And the strip, Perez. Quick the other way, will outrun good child and miss the layout. Okay, she's missed probably three. Layups. Diamond Johnson's missed at least two. Uh -oh. NC State, when the pack can D it up and rebound, good block by Boyd. They can transition the other way. Kai Crutchfield with an easy two for the pack. Debbie in her ACC championship <laughs> game debut. Hey, and don't think Louisville doesn't remember that <laughs> moment. Uh, this is going to be electric in here. Only a couple of hundred tickets left before they sell it out here on Thursday night. And you can see uh, NC State back-to-back -back ACC champs. Louisville four consecutive regular season champs. And a top five showdown. Right here on KL Court Thursday night, prime time on ESPN. There's usually a lot on the line. As Jada, I mean, uh, Jakia Brown Turner knocks it down. There's usually a lot on the line when these two get together. Right now, number one seed, uh, Charlie Cream has South Carolina Stanford, who won today in a close one. Mm -hmm. NC State, Louisville dominated Boston College. Uh, and Indiana was able to survive overtime against Purdue. Of course, Tennessee put it to Kentucky. And Iowa State, do not sleep on Bill Finley's team. That is a very good basketball team out of the Big 12. And Debbie, mark it down. It is January 16th at 5.30 Eastern, our first reference to the G-curve, the geography curve in women's college basketball. So the South Carolina for regionals would, would go probably to Greensboro, right? Stanford probably goes to Spokane. That means there's two number one seeds, one in Wichita, Kansas. And it does not appear at this point that Duke would grab, uh, that uh, UConn would grab a one seed in Bridgeport. And they, they would might, likely stay there. They're going to be there because of the G-curve. So that means a one seed's probably going to have to go in there, and it would look like probably the ACC champ or the Big Ten champ. Yep, at this juncture. And that, uh, I think Connecticut right now, Charlie Cream has them at a three seed. Yeah. And they're going to be in Bridgeport. And, and, you know, right now, Connecticut fans and South Carolina fans could probably buy tickets to those yeah. regionals. But the rest of the country doesn't know, so they have to wait. The, the news this week was that, that uh, Beckers is, uh, Paige Beckers is progressing well. So she That's could good be back uh, in time for the NCAA tournament. And, of course, just take a look at some of the history. They, they never lose in the NCAA tournament playing in the Northeast, and that would be the challenge trying to go in there against Connecticut. 
Next Sunday, got a really good women's basketball quadruple header for you at North Carolina and Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech, and NC State. It's ACC Women's Hoops, better than ever, Sunday afternoon on ACC Network. Of course, the height of the Atlantic Coast Conference was uh, that 2006 Final Four when they had three of the teams at the Final Four in Boston, including the Duke Blue Devils, the Maryland Terrapins, and the North Carolina Tar Heels. Maryland beating Duke for the national championship that year. Three minutes to play in this one. Yeah, James drilling a triple. Dave Wilson tries to count. Confidence. That's what Wes Moore wants from his team. Don't be afraid to pull the trigger. Or they're going to they're going to stay as the best three-point shooting team in the land at this rate. They're 50 percent from downtown today. Oh, good traffic rebound by Hayes. Get some an extra possession. has a good point there. She thought it was a jump ball, not a travel. Sophie Hart now checking into the game for NC State. Sophie Hart. On the other side, it's uh, Imani Lewis cutting out for Duke. Yeah, Sophie Hart is a freshman. She's going to be a really good player. 6'5", going against Elisa Kunain every day in practice. James with a floater off the glass. She's got five. Yeah, I asked Sophie Hart, are you learning? She said, yes. I said, are you working hard? She said, yes. I said, are you having fun? She said, absolutely. That's the triumvirate right there. There you go. Her parents are here from Minnesota to watch. Of course, they have no trouble dealing with the weather outside. They're here early. They left early, she said, to get to the building so they could uh, get a chance to get in the building early. All right, so let's turn now our attention to the uh, the chess match that's coming here on Thursday night between Westmore and Jeff Walls, their coaching staffs to get these two teams ready to go. What, what do you expect, or how, how does State win? How does Louisville win? Well, NC State's got to shoot it well, and they've got to share it. You know, if they share it and they move it and they force that tough defense of Louisville to have to rotate, you've got to get a piece of the paint against Louisville. It's going to be really important. And for Louisville, they've got to get the tempo where they can manage the game. And if Jeff Walls can get to 70, he usually wins. Now, NC State averages 80. They've been winning all the nail biters this year. They've had a lot of close games, and they've been figuring out ways to win them. Their only loss was the season opener. You know, you alluded to it before about how good conference play is. You have to be excellent in the fourth quarter. You have to be able to execute the detail of the game. You've got to know the scout. You got to have a feel for how the game is going, and you're going to have to get to the free throw line. It's going to be a physical game. Louisville does such a good job of shrinking the court, and NC State wants to make the court wide. And this joint will be jumping because, unfortunately, the weather forced a lot of folks to stay home today. But 5,500 have packed in here twice already this year. They are expecting 5,500 on Thursday night. Surrounding Kitty Alcorn. Pack were undefeated in here last year for the second time in school history. Hey, got her feet set. There you go. That away, Sophie Hart. Promising young freshman for NC State, taking advantage of being ready when her number gets called. So NC State will improve to 7-0 after Louisville's win today, 5-0 in league play. Duke 
will slide below 500 in the lead, two and three. Good look up the floor by Hayes. Romani Lewis, weak side Madison Hayes. Here's Genesis Bryant into the lineup. Knocks it down. Okay, there's a talented group of players getting some minutes right now for NC State. That's what the future's gonna look like. Lee Volker, the freshman out of Virginia, now into the ball game for Duke. One of their two rookies that they added this year. De Jesus. And that will head to the other end. And that should do it. NC State will not have to take a shot here. And now they're going to reverse it and give it to Duke. And that should do it. 84 to 60, NC State over Duke here this afternoon to stay undefeated in league play. Really good team effort, 47% from the floor, 47% from the three-point line. And a balanced attack by the Wolfpack. Three players in double figures led by Elisa Kudane with 23. And Wes Moore coaching in game number 1,000 of his career. It's a W over the Blue Devils. Fourth top 25 win of the season for NC State as they take down the Duke Blue Devils. 84 to 60, the final Lisa Kunane leading the way for NC State, her third 20 point performance of the season. 23 with six rebounds. Perez and Boyd also in double digits. For our entire crew, Debbie Antonelli and Beth Mullins. Hey, enjoy Thursday night's game, everybody. NC State and the Bill.